Hello and welcome to Waypoint Podcast, The Grind, the show all about content creation where we talk directly to content creators. Joining me as part of Waypoint, we got Alec Bobko. How you doing, Alec? Doing great tonight. Fantastic. But the man of the hour, Kyle Stevenson. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Perfect. Ready to chit chat about the grind. Is, is yeah. the grind a good term anymore? Because I don't think it is. Just for the record, I'm wondering if we should we're, re- we're repurpose this word. We're outside of the club right now. We're not in the club, so I think we're okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. For, for sure, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Kyle, this show is just our like, laid-back interview show where we, we talk about the grind, essentially, how you got to where you're at and you know, the hardships that come from that. But yeah. I'm going to start, start you off with just a little introduction. Who are you? What do you do? And how did you start doing it? Sure. Uh, my name is Kyle Stevenson. I am a uh, podcaster where I talk about PlayStation every single week on the Trophy Room and uh, co-founded 61indie.com, which is a place where we uplift indie developers. You know it very well, Austin. I do. Wink, wink. I do. Wink, I do. Uh, yeah. So how I got started was um, I used to run Kind of NYC, which was like the New York area of, of Kind of Funny Best Friends. And uh, we st- still technically do, but uh, we um, we did a meetup a couple years ago. And one of the people that showed up was uh, Joseph Moran, a.k.a. Mr. Badbit, my co-host on the Trophy Room. And we hit it off pretty instantly. And uh, before that, I never th- had any dreams or inclinations that i'll ever like sit down and do podcasts pretty regularly or make stuff for people to listen or watch um and it wasn't until a few weeks after i met him he hopped into our big group chat that we had and he was like hey my my co-host is out this week i need somebody to talk playstation with and i raised my hand because ever since i stumbled across podcast beyond looking for last of us collectible guides on ign um I've all oh, I did not realize podcasts were a thing. Like that was my introduction to what podcasts were, and um, so like I would have loved to sit down and talk PlayStation. And so he said that I jumped on it, and that was like he likes to say a test run, a test run to see if I if there was good chemistry. A few weeks later, I went to PSX. Uh, the last yeah. year they had it, what twenty seventeen, I believe. Mm, sounds right. Um, and then after I came back, he had me on to talk about all the demos. And then since then, it's been every single week for three years. And it's uh, pretty awesome, if I do say so myself. I also had a, a show called Best Friends Talk Funny, where I had kind of funny best friends on and interviewed them and just, you know, highlighted how awesome the community was, uh, which I missed dearly. But it was just I had too much on my plate. So something had to go. Right. Unfortunately. But yeah. That's fantastic. I, that was actually going to segue into how that got started. So it's fantastic that you just took that out of the way right off the bat. Oh, sweet. That's great. The best friends And one? the how did you get started with uh, Trophy Room? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. And then it's weird because I, I, I work for, uh, I do some work over at 61 Indie, and I don't really know how that got started. I know it was kind of NYC, yeah. but I was just, and I know that you guys are all best friends in the community. I know that, but is there more to the story that I don't know? That I should know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, there's really not a whole lot to it. Um, okay. I mean, the the main basis as to why we changed the name. Uh, we were going to like packs and we were covering stuff as much as we could without media badges or whatnot. And we were getting a couple game codes from Pop Agenda and other uh, indie places. And uh, we always we love indie games. Like that's one of our main bread and butter of what we like to play. And um, we all had this fear of not wanting to get in trouble with the kind of funny crew because we kind of was in our name. And uh, we gotcha. even had we even mm-hmm. had some people of like, oh, you're kind of funny in New York. No, 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 no. I, I <laughs> don't want to do <laughs> flattered. Yes, but absolutely not. I don't want to take any. I don't want Nick to call me and say we're being sued or whatever. Like, so I don't think they'd do that. Regardless. I don't think so either. But still, I want to be like super better safe than sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So we had like a two night brainstorming session out until like three, four in the morning of name changes. And uh, six one indie was born. Mm-hmm. And that's something to do with a sorry. I, I'm not from New York, but like a subway or s- yes. a subway station. So during our research, Mike found a abandoned subway platform uh track 61 which was used to usher out presidents and other people of notoriety notoriety um, what a word i know right <laughs> uh that's something i do all the time I, big words not good with um, <laughs> fair enough 
they use that platform to bring like public figures out and out of their way so the public doesn't like bother them mm-hmm. per se um and so we're using that platform to bring light to these indie games that are are being overlooked and whatnot so kind of fits pretty well i'm very excited about it <laughs> yeah i think so too i think that's a like i heard remnants of that story before but i figured i'd yeah. get it directly from the source sure. that seemed like a like a better thing to go about yeah um alec you have like a software question that we ask literally everyone do you want to ask that um I like sure I... oh. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> uh sure yeah um i guess just in terms of like tech being the editor at waypoint um say any or what uh software do you use any uh editing horror stories you might have yep. oh god yes um, <laughs> nothing currently because that's the that's the one bummer uh from my end i mean some might say it's not a bummer good for you kyle but uh, Joe does all the editing for Trophy Room, and Mike takes care of everything on his end for a six one stuff. Uh, I just have to really just show up and talk. Um, I want to do more, but Mike's an audio engineer; he would never let me touch audio. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, Joe is just e- extremely good at it, and he stays up super late and does it, and does it doesn't like handed it off to me. I'm sure everyone that edits something knows like the. You want to get your hands on it. So mm-hmm. as much as I plead, he was like, hey, let me do it. He was like, no, I have my methods. I'll do it. But yep. when it comes to when, <laughs> see, Alec, mm-hmm. uh, when uh, it came to Best Friends Talk Funny, actually, when I was doing everything on my own, that was all my okay. thing. And there was um, a couple of times where the audio would become out of sync over time. And it would mm-hmm. sync up perfectly yeah. at the beginning. And then by hour 10 of like a two hour conversation, the my guests would always start getting further and further apart and the audio would blend in and be out of sync and i would have to go in and cut out all the the silence to put them back where they're supposed to be and it mm-hmm. just took time too much time so that is one of the main reasons why i don't do it anymore just because i didn't have time to sit down and edit for five hours every single week on the, a single episode mm-hmm. and in, in addition to reaching out for guests and and finding times to record and it was a lot. I miss it, but um, editing was one of my biggest biggest hurdles. And when, when it worked, it worked great. In and out, like 30, 45 minutes. Like, right. I don't know. I'm not somebody, when I'm editing a show, I don't listen to the full thing. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Honestly. I just can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, for me, I've actually, like, just these past couple edits that uh, that went up this past week, the Mortal Kombat spoiler cast and Invincible. I've got it now where in OBS, all the audio levels are like set perfectly. So it's awesome. like you said, 30, 40 minutes in edit, you know, render in about a half hour. Boom. Just in and out. Absolutely. Slap yeah, an intro, slap an outro. Good to go. <laughs> that's that's kind of what I love about um, Streamlabs, even though it like it does have some issues mm-hmm. when we when we live stream and stuff. It just saves everything. So I don't have to worry about resizing windows if we're in the same like yep. recording channel here in Discord. We're good to go. So like we can take our time and, and I can use that time more for like making sure the doc is good and filled with everything we're going to talk about and and just prepare myself for the guests if we have a guest coming on. So that's super, super nice. It's when the Elgato stops working. That's when I get mad. <laughs> yeah. It's it's never a just plug it in and it works. It never happens that way. <laughs> Capture cards are just weird that way, where it's like, yeah. oh, Windows has an update. Let's just not work. Exactly. Or <laughs> yep. it works fine, and then after 30 minutes, the the game will freeze on Streamlabs. <laughs> and, yep. But it, it's looking fine for you, so you have to unplug it and plug it back in, and it's just it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. For yeah. sure. I know for me personally, when it comes to editing, sometimes I'll watch the whole thing. It also depends on how long the thing is that I'm editing. Um, like, there was a pitch it the it, it was a pilot episode that we put up recently of a new show and since it was the pilot since it was a new show i really wanted to make sure it was perfect so i watched the whole thing and it was only 45 minutes so mm-hmm. not terrible but i know for a fact that i've had like half hour videos where i'm like i'll just click here it worked for five seconds i'll click here it worked for five seconds i'll click mm-hmm. here it worked yep. for five seconds and i'm like all right think it think it's, thinks it good yeah it's good i did i the first couple yeah i did listen to the whole thing it was like i can't I can't do it. Yeah. First of all, I hate the sound of my own voice. Second of all, I just relived this conversation. So, and I know what it <laughs> is, and I get bored listening to the same thing over and over again. Mm. Um, 
And that that's that just sounds like I'm bashing the guests. I'm not. It's just me. I just literally just lived the conversation. I can't mm-hmm. I can't watch a movie back to back in the same way. But gotcha. what I used to do was I would have a notebook and I would be very diligent. Like if I coughed, I would write down the time code. I was around the same thing. So that way I would have time codes to go back and look at and that sped it up as well. So like I know it's around in this minute and then I can scrub right. through that minute and find it and in and out kind of thing that's very smart that's something i have never done probably should look into doing that for yeah. sure it's yeah. easier now with this elgato where i can just tap the top and exactly yeah oh yeah cool god sent yep. god sent. yep <laughs> for sure um and there was there was totally a segue earlier that i should have segued into but i instead i went to alec and made him feel awkward about the tech <laughs> question but i'm gonna come back to it because we have a question <laughs> from the waypoint press pool we might have answered some of it but just bear with me it's sure. about it's about the rebrand um, it says, this is Brett, Jim Tasty. He says, how smooth was the process from rebranding from Kinda NYC to 61 Indie? With their own identity, did they find themselves more emboldened to try new things along with bringing other people on board? Question uh, mark. Yeah, so the process was almost fully smooth. There are a couple of hiccups. Uh, one is... Um, when we have an idea, we, we, we do it like instantly. We don't give it time. So like that whole mm-hmm. thing was like within a week. <laughs> we could have we could have worked and, and you know unveiled it uh, uh, in a, a month or so to give us more time. Mm-hmm. But we had to worry about uh, switching over our emails, making a new site. Mm-hmm. Um, the YouTube thing was I think the most stressful because literally two months before we finally got our custom URL and we did it kind of NYC. And then we had that decision of rebranding and we didn't want to go through the the hundred subs or start over again. So we, I, I think Mike found a way where you can change it to like a company kind of channel. So you still had to wait 30 days for that to go through, but then you got to change the custom URL again. It's under like okay. one big umbrella. So luckily gotcha. we got that. Um, as far as like us wanting to like branch out and do more things, it does feel it feels good to not have that fear anymore of like pissing off the KF crew. Of, if that would ever happen, like you said, right. I don't think they would. You're but paraphrasing. Yeah. It, it feels good to uh, be a little bit more freer in our yeah. decisions and, and being out there and asking for game codes and not having to worry, not having to explain what kind of funny it is if people aren't mm. fans of that. You know what right. I mean? Like that was another yeah. conversation we'd have at PAX. Like, yeah, we're kind of NYC. We're a group of, best friends and fans are kind of funny oh what's kind of funny and then mm-hmm. they already lose interest at that, mm-hmm. that point if they're not super into or if they're not like one of the the good developers out there or pr people that actually right. listen to people who are talking um <laughs> but yeah it feels good and we get we get to bring people on like you austin and and harry who's a new york best friend and people who reach out and want to write for us that's cool they're working on things as well like that's it, awesome to have a home for it's it's a little bit like the best friends talk funny thing where we're, we're highlighting people's talents and and up and bringing totally. voices and making sure they're heard like i think that's super cool yeah and that's um something that i really liked about uh the best friends talk funny show is that i've gotten to get connected with so many people through that show and i think that's even where i first uh started following you kyle was from that show nice yeah i miss it i Spoiler alert, I'm thinking about bringing it back. Don't know when. Got the scoop. Don't don't know if I have time. But that's it's the, uh, that's the killer. I miss yeah. it. Every 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 once in a while I'll go on the, the Twitter account. On the Twitter. Look at that logo. <laughs> uh oh, I gotcha. the logo that Matt Ferguson made. I'm like, man, I really enjoy that. And the music that Mike made for it, like, I miss it. So mm-hmm. have you thought about doing like a like a monthly version or something like that where it's like live on Twitch? Yeah, I've thought about it, and I, I think that's kind of... Where you're heading? Kind of that area? Kind of, sort of, yeah. Or, like, really diving in, and we haven't really tested it f- too much yet, but, like, changing mm-hmm. Dollar Slice, which is our conversational podcast for 61 Indie, into a little bit more, like, Best Friends Talk Funny, have a guest on every other week, and, and kind of turn that into it. I just miss meeting new people and talking about right. them on podcasts. Like, that's mm-hmm. that's that was the biggest joy out of it. Um and running them through the ringer of like the Bakuga zone, three minutes of rapid fire questions. Like I, I enjoy doing that. <laughs> Who wouldn't enjoy doing that? Yeah, exactly. For sure. 
Um, yeah, and going back to the rebrand real quick, it from what from what you said, it feels more like a level up almost. Like it wasn't just a new name. It felt like it, mm-hmm. you guys are your own thing now because you've learned what not to do. You've learned things that mm-hmm. you've maybe done wrong, and you just you took you took that step. That's what that's what it sounds like to me. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely taking that step and taking more ownership over what we were doing and and, and going out on our own, for lack of a better word. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels good, and, and we're still we still have that kind of identity of the community out here on the East coast. Like we still do movie nights every other Friday yeah. or whenever something cool happens. So we haven't lost completely that identity, but we're now mm-hmm. covering indie games, which deserve to be covered. And absolutely. That's super rad. I just wish I could contribute more. That's the one big thing in everything that I do. I wish I could be doing more. Mm-hmm. That weird thing in the back of my head. Like I, I could be doing more let's plays on the YouTube. I could be doing more of the tweeting. I could be writing. I hate writing, but like I could be doing some. Hmm. It just it's the little bit of that that doubt that goes in your head, like you're not doing enough, even though I'm doing enough. <laughs> yeah. I feel that. Yeah, I have a uh, love hate yeah. relationship with writing. I have a love hate relationship with pretty pretty much every all content creation, but writing especially. Yeah, I hated writing all my life, and then college in masters my in my masters program, I had to take a children's writing course or whatever, and I had to write a what were they called? There was a set of like letters or little like mini essays that would were, would be published like in an actual publication that people buy. I forgot what they were called. Um, Reader's Digest, I think. Okay. They have like certain letters anyway. And I wrote something uh based on the office. Um and the Pam <laughs> and Jim and the Pam and Jim relationship and how that's kind of what I want out of a relationship, that kind of loving, joking kind of thing. Um and my professor loved it and submitted it and uh got a lot of praise on it. And that was the one time someone gave me praise on my writing and I was on cloud really? nine. The one time and then <laughs> uh it just i never had a chance to write again after that and even though i could have done it on my own but just said not to it's too much i'd rather play games or watch movies <laughs> that makes sense i get yeah. he's got a point he's got a point mm-hmm. okay let's see what else i got for you it's not gonna be rapid fire questions but if my phone won't lock my phone's being difficult <laughs> dun, 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 dun. oh and as far as uh going back to your tech stuff alec Mm-hmm. Um, just thinking of like I'm sitting here now with like an upgraded webcam and a ring light, and so like back oh. in the day, looking at the what the videos were and how I sounded when I started, not nearly as good now. And but that's not saying like for anyone listening to this that wants to do something, uh, Blue Snowball is perfect. Oh yeah, it will it will get the job done. That's Honestly, what I had a headset mic too. Like yeah, that's a for great... sure. There are some some guests that come on Trophy Room or or Six One or like the developers that we've been interviewing here and there that have a headset mic and they sound better than sometimes I do or Joe yep. does on Trophy Room. Like it's wild. <laughs> uh, Chris's Chris is, so someone at Waypoint, uh, Chris yeah. aka Rumble Pack ninety two. His I'm pretty sure he just uses a gaming headset, doesn't he, Alec? Yeah, yeah, and it's, he sounds great. He sounds better than yeah. me most of the time. Yeah, so it's that barrier of entry is super low. And mm-hmm. you don't need the best webcam or even a ring light if you are in a room with lots of light. I'm currently in the basement, so I need the light. Mm. But um, yeah, those earlier videos and stuff are just, they don't look great, at least as what I look like now, and mm-hmm. don't sound as good. But like, barrier yeah. of entry is super low, so just grab a mic and go if you want to do something. Yep, 100%. I definitely use that uh, stimulus to upgrade my camera. Yes. <laughs> Got that uh, Logitech Brio same nice i i'm a little upset it's not as sharp and as crisp as yeah. i thought it would be <laughs> yep it's definitely same i don't though. know why but yeah when you when you say like barrier of entry is very low i remember my my first let's play i ever put up very very bad the audio was a little off what and, was the game uh little nightmares oh sweet yeah great game actually love that game um, but I remember looking, watching it back. I actually watched it the other day just to reminisce on nonsense. Um, and you know how you, your face cam, like I, I had my face cam as like a total, like it looked like a total vin- mini version. Like it was still ratioed the complete wrong way. It was just like a normal rectangle instead of a square. <laughs> just up there in the corner floating. And I, I'm watching it back and oof, it was, it was rough. <laughs> it was very rough. Yeah. We've all been there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had to start somewhere. I had to start somewhere. 
everyone's searched on YouTube a how to start streaming once or twice. A hundred percent. How to do the the Twitch layout? How how do I edit a podcast? Like yeah, it, everyone OBS. Obia, exactly. <laughs> Why is my Elgato not working? That's a weekly thing for me. <laughs> I did want to ask you about Greg Miller. Oh, little okay. birdie tells me you had him on the show or having him on the show. This upcoming Wednesday, actually. As upcoming Wednesday. Recording. Yeah, May fifth. Nice. Are you nervous? Oh my God, I'm <laughs> terrified. <laughs> and it, like I've met Greg before. I've had the <laughs> honor of actually talking to him for more than i probably ever thought i would Mm -hmm. and i'm not nervous for i'm not nervous to see him on the other side of the camera okay i'm just so nervous that i about the show and i want the show to do well because it's not every day greg miller comes on another playstation podcast to talk about playstation so i just want every i just want everything to run as smooth as possible conversation will be there that's not what i'm worried about i just I don't want to screw it up because <laughs> it has a it has a lot in my own mind, a lot riding on it of like more eyes on us, mm-hmm. potentially being able to get bigger games to maybe cover. Mm-hmm. Like there's there's a lot there's a lot going on in my head of like, all right, don't stumble over your words. Take your time. Don't say, yeah, it's cool. A bunch of times on the podcast when talking about Returnal, like just take your take your time. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, yeah, breathe. I'm going to be a little bit more nervous uh, whenever I go on PS. I love you because that's part of the part of the deal. Mm-hmm. So that that is when I'll be shaking my boots fully. Not just <laughs> worried about being smooth, but just like don't sound like an idiot, Kyle. That's the yeah. biggest one on that one. I know what you mean. Totally. Um, Alec, you got any more questions? I have a few to follow up, but you got anyone? Um, not off the top of my head. Okay. I have some basic ones. You probably could uh, answer them pretty quickly, Kyle. Sure. Um, if you had a blank check to create whatever you wanted to in the content creation f- sphere, what would you create? Oh, jeez. Blank check. Blank Anything check. you want. I love trivia. I love okay. trivia. I would make a akin to what Easy Allies does. I love Easy Ally stuff. They have a uh, a game show called Mystery Mysterious something, or it's it's basically a a Jeopardy game show all about video game trivia and whatnot. Got it. Where like you would get earn money and then buy weapons in the shop that would do double damage against the enemies in the game. Like it's super rad. So I would do like a, a trivia video game show, or like a lot of like produced game kind of stuff, not traditional like video games with like a contestant kind of game show that sounds really cool and there's yeah. not there's not like a ton of those either at least i don't think no. so mm-hmm. yeah yeah good uh good pocket there to a little success yeah. with that blank check yeah then i got one more oh i actually did just think of something um, take it away with six one indie uh just i don't say maybe run through some of the shows that you guys do some of the other sure. content you create um, yeah so uh people uh write for us like austin he writes reviews uh we have a hype check thing where we we talk about what games we're super hyped for for the upcoming month uh in addition to all the written stuff on the site we have a youtube channel which is um not nearly as populated with with content as we want it to but we have uh developer interviews we have one with kyle seeley for emily's away three uh, Jed Shepard, director, not director, one of the writers of the best horror movie of last year, Host, and upcoming Ghost Game. Um, who else did we talk to? Uh, Bonte Avant, the Everybody Wham Wham uh, team over in, I believe, Denmark? I'm sorry, team, if you if I got that wrong. Uh, but we have that stuff on our YouTube channel. We Twitch stream. We try to Twitch stream every Tuesday and Thursdays, and then our live podcast recordings uh six one indie cast which is our game focus one and dollar slice is our conversational one we do that we we every other week we swap we swap them out okay on saturdays yeah now in terms of podcasts um do you guys where do you host those podcasts like i know like we use anchor for all ours Mm. which is nice for getting them out to everywhere but at the same time you're only limited to like one podcast show sure 
Yeah. Without uh, having to do it all manually. I mean, it's good to start off, but it it's yeah. something that I've been thinking about. For sure. I'm trying to remember the name of the place. <laughs> Again, because <laughs> Mike takes care of it. I haven't mm-hmm. been on there in a while. But it's the one I used for Best Friends Talk Funny. It was, um, oh my God. It's green and white. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's only like five bucks a month and it's unlimited it's okay. it's very very nice um i'll look this up while we're while we're we're talking but it's 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 very friendly it gives you stats on how many people are listening what what mm-hmm. where they're listening to you they link it directly to spotify for you um which is fantastic oh, okay um you can also like uh what's the word i'm looking for a plot or yeah apply for other hosts to or other places to host your podcast and whatnot um it was very friendly that's something else that i did not know going into podcasting was like oh i have to pay for a place to host my podcast right i can't just talk and make up the file and upload it somewhere i can't do that that's another reason we went with anchor it's completely free yeah (laughs) yep absolutely (laughs) yeah there is a free version of the one that i'm thinking of the same kind of deal like one one a one a week, I think, up to a certain file, uh, mm-hmm. a certain file size, but I can't remember. The only green and white one I'm seeing is Buzz Sprout. No, that's Podbean. Not <laughs> Definitely not Podbean. <laughs> yeah, I've not heard good things about Podbean. Yeah. Hey, I'm just reading. I'm just reading. <laughs> no, that was. I was just it. curious. I know you've uh, said you've been playing a lot of Returnal lately. Yeah, I actually just beat it before hopping on here. Ooh. See, yeah. I've been playing a bit. I'm still in the first biome, but I've been struck with a few of the uh, bugs. Like, I uh, had a hard mm. crash on me once, and mm. then uh, two times I've been struck with the glitch where the door just won't open. Ooh, that's where not good. I've did, after a little bit of research, I found out that apparently it's just because of a pre-order suit <laughs> where the base. Oh, won really? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. That was, uh, yeah. Like after a really good run, you know, 45 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I <laughs> earlier today or this morning I was playing, um, and I got all the way to the, the last biome and, there was an area with a lot of ammo and and waves coming at me, and the audio just suddenly stopped. I'm like, mm-hmm. uh-oh, that's not good. And I could still move for like a split second, and then it just completely froze. And oh, I could no. back out to the PS5 home menu, but the mm-hmm. audio was gone there, too. Oh, no. Like, there was no audio <laughs> anywhere. And I went to go close the application, and I, it said closing app, and then it would never close. And it was stuck on that for 10 minutes. So I had to Oof. turn off the entire power supply oh, and hard no. turn it off. And I was freaking out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Luckily, we're all good. Thank God. But it's uh, <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. It was bad. It's putting it nicely. Yeah, I've, he- I've heard of a lot of bugs. Have you had? Is that the only bug you've encountered? The Returnal? only one, un- uh, luckily enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. So I have two more questions. Very simple ones. What's the end goal? What's the mm. pie in the sky you're going for? What's content creation? In the near future, just keep putting out the best stuff possibly can. It's a good answer. Um, one day I would love to be able to get paid to talk about the things <laughs> that I'm passionate about. Right? Yep. That's... That would be incredible, mm-hmm. especially because I um, went to school for teaching. Okay. Uh, substitute teacher. That. Yeah, substitute teacher for over a decade. Um, because of the pandemic, I haven't been there. I went once and I had a panic attack Oof. and I haven't been back. Um, and I think I'm kind of done with teaching, unfortunately. It's just like I, I haven't been given a shot for a classroom and I don't like the politics of who gets hired and, and whatever. So like I think I'm done with that race and trying to find something new. So ideally I would love to make this my, my income and be able Mm -hmm. to do it. And ideally where, I mean, it would be kind of funny. That's, that's the end goal. And not, not even just, I don't have to be on camera. I don't have to talk about anything. I just want to, you know, help Joey out with the community stuff. I, I edit stuff in the background, like whatever, 
be the mm-hmm. social media person. Like I just that group of people, human beings, have done so much for me that it's ideally that is a place where I would love to work at and make sure that the company is here for a long time and the community is as best as it possibly can be. Man, that's a really good answer. Kind of funny. They're 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 magic, right? There's something Absolutely. about kind of funny. Mm-hmm. I feel I feel like Alec and I Alec and I wouldn't have met without kind of funny. So yeah, no, I, yeah. literally everyone I podcast with is because of the kind of funny community. Mm-hmm. Joe, Mike, Kelsey. It's insane. Yeah. They're magic. And I, I would be distraught if I didn't mention that Gray's gonna be a dad now, and that's freaking fantastic. Yeah, it's awesome. Seriously. Yeah. Daddy that's Miller. So. What's the name gonna be? Well, it's a boy, mm-hmm. so I have I have money on Clark, <laughs> but Clark? we'll see. Clark's good. <laughs> Might be too on the nose. Not... Yeah, I can see yeah. it. Mm. Would Jen go for it? Do we think Jen will go for that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. I know they're joking Clark. on the podcast, right? Middle name Watto. <laughs> 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 Baby Watto. Will it be a Greg the Fourth? Greg the Fourth. There it is. That that announcement was something that. Uh, they they posted on Twitter and I started crying and I'm like, why am I crying? Like Absolutely. this isn't. Yep. I don't do this. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And if anyone knows me, I I'm a I'm Greg Miller in the sense of I wear my heart on my sleeve. So <laughs> like I play a sad game, I cry about it. If movie cry, even in like happy times, like mm-hmm. Greg announcing that Greg and Jenner are having a baby, like I've cried. Mm-hmm. Like f- extreme emotions, I get uh, I get very emotional. And I think right. that's that's good. I mean, Enjoy I it. teared up during that uh, Marvel Phase Four hype trailer. Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> Literally sitting watching it at work on my lunch break, and just yeah. tears of hype. Like, oh. come on! Yeah. <laughs> so good. They're the masters of it, man. They know what they're doing. Little weird. No blade. Is blade not in Phase Four? <sighs> I just don't further know. out than Fantastic Four, maybe. Possibly. Yeah, possibly. I know Blade was like. Like when when they did announce that, like it was barely in the works. Like it right. wasn't sure, even sure. like yeah. And probably COVID and everything kind of yep. pushed it even further. Yeah. I can see that as well. That's fair. Okay, Kyle, we're pretty much done. And the way we end this show almost every time is usually like, "What's your game of the year?" But mm. since we're only a few months into the year and there's not a ton to talk about besides Returnal, which we already did, what's your most anticipated game of this year? Oh boy. That's tough. It's between two. Okay. But I'm, yeah, I just let us know I'm, both. No, say yeah, I just, you can listen as many as you want. No okay. rules. All right. In that case, <laughs> uh, if God of War Ragnarok comes out this year, absolutely. Oh, of course, of course, absolutely. Do we do uh, we think that's going to be a shorter experience? You know I, what I mean, I, I don't think so. I oh, think okay. it'll be a full length. I, I will. I wouldn't care if it's shorter. Like Miles is fantastic. So yeah, mm-hmm. I wouldn't care um, either way. But it's it's between Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, like, good God. Looks beautiful. And I've never seen so many things on the screen at one time in a video game. <laughs> and right. It's going to yeah. be amazing. Uh, but the the main, the big, big one is Horizon Forbidden West. I'm a huge really? Horizon okay, cool. fan. I love Aloy. Yeah. I'm so excited to dive back into that world and uh, figure out what's going on. It's almost Why? like uh, it's almost like you run a PlayStation podcast. It's weird. I know, right? All these, all these so PlayStation weird. games. It's so weird. So that's the thing. I never fully played a Zelda game, so it's I can't say Breath of the Wild too. I'm um, playing my first Zelda game. I I'm oh, in the middle of playing the remake of Link's Awakening, and I oh, nice. I really I really like that game. It's very simple. Yeah. I figured it was a, it was a good Zelda to start with, you know, because mm-hmm. it's not gonna ask it's not gonna ask too much of me. Um, yeah, yeah. The dungeons, the dungeons in that game alone are fun, which is pretty much the main thing of that game. But yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't own an Xbox. Uh, I have Game Pass, but I'd rather get trophies. I'm a trophy, <laughs> trophy person. Um, Fair enough. But as far as like indies go, um, drink boxes. Nobody saves the world is right up there with Horizon. I love a good drink box game, and that game looks so good. That's fair. Yeah, and uh, at that recent event, that Ludo Naricon, is that what it was mm-hmm. called? Um, the yeah. one we covered? Yes. Yes. Uh, there's a game on their Kraken Academy. That oh, looks yes. Incredible. <laughs> Just the and, writing in that game. Yeah. And the dev team is like super friendly and talking mm-hmm. to us on Twitter and mm-hmm. sending us stickers. Like, oh, my oh, God, that's awesome. I can't wait for the game. Alec, you have no idea. You're not ready for that game. <laughs> no, it's it's like happens. half bear, half person. Oh, my gosh. 
<laughs> I'll tell you, the, there's a broccoli girl. I'll say there's a broccoli <laughs> girl. Broccoli. Yeah. I'll tell you, the one indie that I'm really looking forward to is that Aztec Forgotten Gods from that oh, Indie World yeah. showcase. That looked mm-hmm. amazing. It did look super cool, super stylistic for sure. And did I see it correctly that they have already optioned it to be a movie? Something yes. like that, yeah. I don't think it's like or that. It was in the works at the same the time works. as the game, okay. something like that. There, there's been a deal yeah. signed. I think, like, right. I think, like, it, I think that's like all, all there is right now. It's just mm-hmm. they signed a deal. But that's fair. Yeah. That's super mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, that looks rad too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, there you have it. Everything about Kyle's grind. So, we will see you at the next waypoint. Bye bye.